Okay, uh, welcome back to the, our, our series on the mathematics of solar energy. Uh, this video we're going to look at an actual example uh, looking at a 5 kilowatt system. Uh, this system, which is the one I've got installed in my own house, uh, is consists of 21 uh, 250 watt panels giving us a total of just over 5000 watts or 5 kilowatts. Uh, 5 kilowatt inverter, it's north facing which is ideal um, in the southern hemisphere. Got a pitched roof and no shading uh, occurs during the day so there's no sort of interference so pretty well we've got the optimal conditions for collecting the, the sun's energy. So let's look at an example of, of uh, I won't say typical day but a, a day um, of use for my solar system. So this is um, fairly recently 20, 25th of um, March this year and we can see here we've got a graph of the power output versus the time of the day and we can see here we've got a fairly smooth smooth curve going around here um, peaking at approximately 1 p.m. Uh, with a peak output of about 4.5 kilowatts um, we're collecting energy from about 8 a.m. through to around about 7 p.m. and the fact that we've got a peak at 1 p.m. can be explained quite easily by the fact that it was actually daylight savings at this time so if we were actually shift it back by an hour we'd see that the peak was pretty well during the middle of the day. Uh, the total yield for the day was 32.7 kilowatt hours which is getting pretty close to sort of a, a maximal yield of 36, 37 kilowatt hours um, from this particular system. Now we can actually go ahead and approximate the area here um, using our approximation technique. I've drawn a trapezium as a as a reasonable approximation of the of the area, uh, the, the blue shaded area here. Um, so if we look at this, we've got from here across to here, we've got 11 hours. From here to here, we've got uh, what was that? About three hours. The height of our trapezium was 4.5. So the area, so the area of our trapezium is a half um, a, which is 3, plus b, which is 11, times by the height of 4.5. And if we put that into a calculator, we get an answer of we get an answer of 31.5 kilowatt hours which is marginally less than the actual yield of 32.7 um, but it's a pretty, pretty good approximation. We could actually work out the percentage error here. Um, percentage error. So we'll do that as the absolute value of 31.5 take the actual value of 32.7 Oops, divided by the actual value of 32.7 times by 100%. Again, if we put that into a calculator, we get a value of, so we've got a percentage error of about 3.7%. So really not, not too bad an error at all. So we've got a pretty good approximation there. Okay, let's compare that to a second example. This is only about a month later. Uh, this time we've got a cloudy, rainy day, uh, towards the end of April. The yield for this day was only 4.7 kilowatt hours and you can see here we've got a peak in the middle of the day at just under 2 kilowatt hours but most of the rest of the day is is around or under half a kilowatt um, of, of power. So pretty poor performance from a or pretty poor output for this particular day. But not surprising on a on a bleak, miserable day. If we look at this in context, that would be enough to run our large heater, 2,400 watt heater, for two hours, or we could cook a meal in our oven for for just over two hours. So probably enough time to cook a cook a nice roast on a uh, rainy, wet day. So as we can see from the previous two examples, there's a lot of variation in how much energy that we um, collect on a daily basis. However what we can do is look at this over a longer time span and calculate the average daily yield of our system. So if you look at the um, 
graph up here, which graphs from middle of 2013 through to current time, we can see six complete years um, with a total annual yield of around about 8,000 8, kilowatt hours. So we can use that as a basis for working out our average daily yield. So if we have a look at that, average daily yield will equal, and we'll use that 8,000 as our baseline there, divide it by the number of days in a year, ignoring uh, leap years, which it gives us an average of 21.9 kilowatt hours per day on average. Now, if we look at that um, per the per a one kilowatt system, we sort of break our five kilowatt system into five one kilowatt systems. So 21.9 divided by five equals divide that by five. We get four point three eight kilowatt hours. Now if we compare that to this table over here, and we're in Adelaide, so if we compare it to Adelaide here, we've got a fairly good good comparison here. So um, that's indicating an average yield of 4.2 kilowatt hours per one kilowatt system. Here we've got uh, 4.38, so we're actually doing slightly better than the predicted average daily production. So we'll just end this video by looking at the variation throughout the year. So the graph I've got shown here is um, the, the yield throughout the year um, 2019, so last year. What we can see here at either end, we've got maximal output, so getting close to you know 1,000 kilowatt hours uh, for for those two months. As we go through the year, though, that number slowly decreases until we hit our minimal value at around middle of the year, during the middle of winter, June and July. So remember, again, we're in the southern hemisphere. And then as we progress through winter back into spring and so forth, we see our yield slowly increases again. So that's going to be typical. We're going to get our best outputs during our summer months. Um, we're going to get our poorest outputs during our winter months. In terms of the usage though, uh, generally the best months for making savings and so forth are going to be autumn and spring months because this is times where uh, the, the weather's generally fairly mild, which means that we're not actually having to use our air conditioner or heaters and that too much. Um, so we're not using as much energy, um, but we're still making or collecting a reasonable energy from our from our solar system, as we, as we can see, particularly for these two months here and most of the way through um, spring.